Hello, and welcome to the one and only channel on YouTube dedicated to educating the viewers on how to improve financial literacy. The wealthy won't admit to you that a large portion of it is in your head, but you should. It is not about working long hours at the job and figuratively excavating your own grave in order to have the luxury of unwinding and taking it easy later on in life. That should not be done. The wealthy mix and mingle while enjoying themselves. I would ask that you kindly allow me to buckle you in. You now have the information, regardless of whether or not you feel a connection to the concept being discussed. In order to ensure that you are notified whenever we release a new video, please like and subscribe to our channel before we begin today's video. Let's get down to business right now. I alluded to the fact that adopting an abundance mindset has impacted so many facets of my life. It has sparked a few conversations and prompted a few questions. As a result of this, I thought it would be helpful to go into more detail on this topic for you. Before we get into specifics of what it means to have an abundance mindset, I want to briefly discuss the law of attraction because in my opinion, the two concepts go hand in hand. Both of these things have a significant impact on the way one thinks. The essence of principle, known as the law of attraction, is that whatever you energetically put out into the world will eventually come back to you. This is what will put you on the same frequency of that thing, and that is when it will appear in your life. You should start thinking about what it is that you want to have and specifically what you would feel if you already had it. This is because this is what will put you on the same frequency of that thing. You have to sort of come to terms with the fact that a significant portion of it is related to your ideas and what you think in relation to your beliefs. You can apply an abundance mindset to any part of your life in which you feel like you are missing, or you can just utilize it as a general habit that you cultivate and learn how to employ. An abundance mindset is not just about money, rather, it is similar to a lifestyle. Are you thinking of which area you're going to apply the abundance mindset already? If so, continue watching this video. When you have an abundance mindset, you are aware that this is not your one and only chance. And as a result, you may confidently turn down offers that do not align with the standards that you have set for yourself. As you take the time to actually sit with yourself and think about what you want and what you're good at, the number of possibilities available to you will decrease. It is a lot more satisfying to live a life that is designed for you rather than one that is based on what other people think is best for them. Money will be used as the primary example because that is really how people should learn about having an abundance mindset. However, you can always use an abundance mindset for any aspect of your life in which you feel a lack, including relationships, love, your well-being, or mental health and happiness. There's a reason why this mentality is referred as an abundance mindset. It has a lot to do with how you think about things. You're probably thinking right off the bat that I want all of the scenes, I want money, and all of these other things. But the truth is that we all do. But you need to delve a little bit further. More specifically, you need to access the more difficult to access area of your mind that is your subconscious. Getting in touch with the things that bury you requires you to revisit some challenging experiences you've had in the past. Because those are significant times in your life that had a role in the formation of the narrative you have now. They say that money doesn't grow on trees, that there isn't enough for everybody, and that in order to have money, be happy, and be wealthy, you have to put in a lot of hard work. If the law of attraction is correct, and if you have a fear of money, then money will also have a fear of you. No one has the right to tell you how your tail should go, because it is your life. You have the right to rewrite it in any way that you see fit. Don't worry about the time, worry about the work. We all have different levels of work that we're going to have to complete. 
and it will need repetition and consistency. Don't worry about the time. Time is of the essence, but in the matters of life, taking things slow makes life even more worthwhile. We are the architects of our lives, and I believe that for many individuals, the desire to have more money isn't motivated just by the desire to have more money. It's often related to having their life back, and it's often tied to getting their independence back as well. You are going to get hit in the face with an inner work. It is going to shake you. It is going to rock your world. And it is going to make you really feel uncomfortable. But the thing that kept me focused and the thing that kept me grounded was that I had too many reasons why I could not give up on myself and the people I want to help. Although it is going to shake you, it is going to rock your world. And it is going to make you really feel uncomfortable. Gratitude is another strategy that has been of great use to me in this regard. Seeing what I did have in those times of what still kind of seemed like I was missing is also a tremendous experience. When you're feeling down, you can tap into thankfulness. And when you please with what you have, it cancels out the things that you don't have. Gratitude was such a good energy. Whatever it is that you have your sights set on will eventually reach an equilibrium. If you just have one item to be thankful for, make that your sole concentration and channel all of your efforts into that one thing. When you focus on your positive, more of the same will come to you. As I've already stated, gratitude is the key to everything. Right? We have to be extremely thankful. We have to extremely acknowledge every good thing that happens to us. One final piece of advice about all of this is to exercise patience. You cannot hold the universe in your hands. What you are asking for will come to you at the exact moment that you are ready for it. It is not the right time if you are not currently receiving it yet. There are many possible explanations for blessings. Make sure that your inner circle is clean, that the individuals in it aren't bringing you down, that they aren't energy vampires, that they aren't taking more from you than they are providing to you. I am aware that this can be challenging, but unfortunately, there are times when we fail to recognize the gifts that surround us. We need to physically and mentally separate ourselves from the individuals that are surrounding us. Therefore, exercise some patience and trust the things will work out for you in due time. Just have faith. And keep in mind that whatever you consider to be your reality actually is the reality. If you want to see what's going on in here, you're going to have to make some adjustments. This concludes our video for today. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And please share your ideas with me in the comment section. I am interested in what you have to say. Having said that, make sure you subscribe and enable notifications so that you will be notified whenever we upload a new video. See you in the next one!